Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tuts, and today we're going to take our SVG lesson that we were working on in the previous video, and we're going to expand on it and show you some really cool techniques that you can use to control and manipulate your SVG directly with CSS. So check it out. We're going to get going right now. So in the last video, we went as far as actually changing the fill to this SVG path using uh, this XML file here. However, what are some more interesting things we can do? Well, actually, we can get rid of some of the stuff in this file. We have a title, we have this description, we have this defs. We don't need this. It also has this thing that says it's generated with Sketch 3. Uh, we don't need that either. In fact, we don't need this XML version at all either. And what we can do is we can copy just this SVG part uh, and we can paste this directly into our HTML. Now this doesn't need to be wrapped in any sort of tag or anything. This is just going to be, uh, it's just going to go right in here. So instead of having it declared as an image, we can paste our SVG directly in our document. Now I'm going to fix the tabbing on this. Uh, to make sure that we're looking nice here so we can see what's going on. Okay, so now we have the same data that was just in that other file. Now it's directly on our site. I'm going to actually remove it from the background image too to get rid of that. Okay, and now let's come to our page and let's refresh. Now here we have our SVG the same as it was. So we didn't have to do anything extra, it just showed up um, using that XML directly in our HTML. Now what are some cool things we can do with that here? Well you can actually treat this HTML just like other HTML. Uh, we could give this uh, CSS based on of classes and things like that. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's look for some important information. We know that this background color is 333 because we see that as this fill. So we can add a class to this G tag which is just a grouping and since we made this shape out of the combination of other shapes that's why it's a group instead of like a path or something like that. Now let's give this a class and let's say uh, this is going to be our new shape. Now this new shape we can now style with CSS. However, it's important to know that SVG shapes have different CSS properties than normal. So let's go ahead into our CSS and if we were to say new shape BG blue for instance. Now we refresh this you get nothing. And it's because that this SVG, this group has no background. Uh, there's no such thing as a background in an SVG shape. What you have is fill. So now if we set this fill property to be blue and we refresh, you'll see that our SVG has now been styled with CSS. Now even more importantly, we can do things, right? Like uh, we can add a hover state. So let's go ahead and say that on hover we're going to make this color red. The classic blue red. Okay, so we refresh this. Now on hover we get red. So we're actually modifying a vector's fill property with CSS and HTML. It's just so awesome. And let's go ahead and see when you hover into this transparent center though, the hover state falls off. Well, if this is a logo and your logo is complex and transparency, you're not going to want that. So let's go ahead and add a class to the SVG itself and we can just call this class equals logo. Now instead of having the hover on the new shape, we can put the hover on logo and then animate new well, not animate, but change the color of new shape just like this. Okay, so now when we hover over the logo at all, it's red. So even in this transparent center, it's going to stay red. 
Now there are too many properties that you can modify with CS to, to go over this directly. I can link to the w3.org page that has all of the, uh, the ways you can style SVG, but you can do all sorts of things like fill opacity, you can add a stroke, uh, you can change the stroke width obviously, you can use gradients, you can have uh, interactivity, you can have filter effects, you can do masking. Uh, basically, there is a ton of stuff that you can do with SVG, and it's totally worth exploring. So there's no reason why you can't use SVG in your projects today. In fact, it's pretty highly supported. You're pretty much going to run into trouble on some older o, uh, mobile OS versions and some IE8. But, you know, honestly, nowadays, what doesn't have problems with IE8? Um, I know I've long moved on from IE8. And I know Google is going to stop supporting IE8 soon, but even then, a fallback isn't difficult. If you're using something like Modernizer, it actually adds a class for browsers that are supporting SVG, and then you can simply trigger on an image version. Now, SVGs are also excellent for high-resolution screens. They're going to look crisp no matter what. So instead of having to have several versions of your image to support retina displays or high-resolution displays, you now can just have one SVG, and it's going to take care of all of those. So get using SVG if you're not already. Uh, it's going to change your life if it hasn't already. So check it out. As always, this is Scott with Level Up Tuts. If you have any questions or comments, leave a comment on the video or hit us up at Twitter or Facebook or anywhere. We love to hear from you. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.